Hey, look, this is Uncle Ricky from Uncle Ricky's house, and this is the weekend wrap-up for the week ending in, uh, let's say, September 3rd, 2023. Uh, first of all, you know what, I'm going to start off with a positive note, because uh, no matter how you look at it, uh, the work that Deion Sanders uh, and doing, you know, doing at the uh, University of Colorado with the Colorado uh, uploads, even though people said that he couldn't. And it seems that he, maybe he can, or well, he is already, because uh, the Buffaloes defeated Texas Christian University, TCU, you know, the ones that played in the national championship last year. Well, they lost, but it was the national championship, and they lost to the Colorado Buffaloes under the coach administration of one Dion Primetime Sanders with his son as the starting quarterback and his other son as a leading defensive back on the Buffalo defense. A lot of people said it couldn't be done, a lot of people said it shouldn't be done, and a lot of people are wondering why it is being done. But despite all the odds, despite all the naysayers, once again, Deion Sanders is proving that Deion, and perhaps the whole Deion clan, is prime time at least when it comes to college football. Well, they've already tied the uh, entire record of the Colorado Buffaloes previous season. They lost every game but one, and now Dion and this 2023 squad of Buffaloes have won the first game. Okay, that's it for the, I guess, quote-unquote, good news. Go Buffaloes, go Dion, go on the whole Sanders clan. Now, um, on a national level, nature, once again, has kicked up her heels on the great old state of Florida, Hurricane Adalia. And what's really weird is that Florida is no stranger to hurricanes, but once again, Mother Nature has hit a part of Florida that has not been a, mm, let's say, primetime victim of hurricane damage. And the score is nature 10 florida zero but even though that dastardly governor ron DeSantis decided to stay at home instead of trying to invest in his sinking campaign to be president of the united states and take care of the constituents that made him the governor of the sunshine state once again had to turn on bended knee to guess who none other than the Democratic-controlled United States government. FEMA. You know, the one, the, you know, one of those government agencies that he swears he's going to defund and deregulate and de- and just take, you know, the life and breath out of the one thing that may be helping people for it. And once again, Joe Biden, because he's the president of all the states, he is the president of all the people. He got on Air Force One, spent taxpayer money, and went to Florida to hear them whine and gripe about being wiped out by Mother Nature once again. But Joe Biden being the man that he is, grandfather to us all, he did not throw paper towels, and he promised to help, just like any other American president should. National level well let's go back to it let's let's uh, do the international level i'm trying to avoid saying the name trump as, as long as possible but on an international level i, I guess uh, the russians have officially claimed that you know uh, Prigozhin was among the dead and that perhaps maybe it wasn't quite the accident that they originally tried to state that it was and even though the world probably knew that and there's quite a few conspiracy theories you know trying to say that Prigozhin isn't dead or Rosen, you know, had been dead a long time ago. Uh, Putin had him killed in the basement. All that kind of crap. But let's just take it for granted that uh, all the smart money, all the, all the sane money is on the fact that Pogosian went down. He's dead. He's done. Uh, you know, and at least for the most part, the world is satisfied that it was his body on the plane. And whether he was dead when he got there... Well, they really don't care because it, it's just Pagosian. I mean, it, the leader of probably one of the most bloodthirsty, uh, 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 criminalistic 
mercenary organizations, state-sponsored mercenary organizations that there are out there because Rogozin was Putin's man until he wasn't. All right, now, um, well, I guess we got to get to Trump. I don't want to do that, but when you tie up the, the news spread internationally and nationally for every day since your dumb ass left the White House, it's kind of hard to get around making any kind of anything close to a political or news type uh, analysis program without having me to unfortunately mis mention the name of Trump. I wish it could be like Candyman, you know, don't just don't say it, you know, you have to say it three times before the worst happens, but now you can't avoid saying it and the worst is probably still yet to come. Um, you know, okay, he's broken the record. He's been indicted four times criminally, not not civilly, not you know, combination civil criminal, not you know, not 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 financial stuff, you know, like fraud or antitrust violations or anything like that. Why fraud? No, he's been criminally indicted for everything from taking uh, government secrets, like. The mar lago case. He's uh, been indicted for illegal use of campaign funds, like the Manhattan Alvin Bragg case, which a lot of people say is just, you know, could have been, should have been, never, never was supposed to be, but here we are anyway. Uh, could be uh, like uh, Jack Smith's other case in D.C., basically, uh, you know, January 6th, fake electors. Um, charge is a little bit short of maybe uh, if you wanted to look at it logically uh, overthrowing the government of the United States definitely trying to obstruct the, an election uh, trying to uh, impede uh, a government proceeding the normal the peaceful transfer of power that you know just simple stuff that nobody really has ever been charged before with you know uh, not in this manner and definitely not as you know, being charged while they were uh, supposedly the president of the United States of America or trying to remain president of the United States of America. Yeah, Trump took us to the new heights, but it's the heights that really no country wants to be at. No, no country wants this in their history unless they can just definitely say, yeah, we got past it and we're so much better for it. And we can't say that yet because it looks like we may never get past it. And if we do get past it, we, we're not going to be better for it because it just because Trump may not be with us, but the, the madness that bears his name. He didn't create it. Trump never created anything. It just, like a lot of other things, bears his name. Uh, Trumpism. Trumpism is still going to be here. And that's a, that's a scary thought <laughs> on this weekend, in September the third, in 2023. Rob around Trump. The Georgia case is 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 is, is, is massive. It's sprawling. It's so many people, and a lot of people say that might be the one downfall for Bonnie Willis. But so far, she's doubled, doubling down on everything that you know has come her way. She has dealt with uh, you know the, the the outrageous and ludicrous. Uh, motions by independent members of the, you know, charge code conspirators, uh, Cheeseboro and uh, Sidney Powell, cracking lady asking for a speedy trial. She's like, okay, let's have it, let's go. And now it's like, balls in your court, what are you gonna do? And they know they're not ready, they know they don't wanna do this. And most of all, the one that they have uh, risked their whole political, their whole financial, Basically, the rest of their uh, free lives on uh, Donald John Trump, he's uh, basically having an x lax attack in his diaper because he doesn't want to see this trial go, you know, start. And it looks like it's probably going to start by the spring of 2024, along with some other stuff. Uh, Tanya Tuckin, uh, yeah, up in D.C., she said, uh, well, you know, uh, she called everybody else up, including maybe even Eileen Cannon, who's been trying to, uh, you know, put her evil talents into the business of a senior federal judge. Uh, Cannon has no business uh, ethically or legally or 
in any in any imaginable uh, light, any interpretation of, of uh, you know the uh, legalities or the canons of of Supreme Court or federal court justice to be interfering in uh, Judge Chuckin's jurisdiction. Two different jurisdictions, two different cases. Can't help it if it involves the same criminal because, I mean, if you act as criminalistic and as freewheeling as uh, the 45th president of the United States allegedly did, you and people finally stand up and, uh, you know, hold the country accountable to you know it's uh it, you know it, it's mainstays of law and order and equal justice for all and you got this guy committing allegedly committing every crime there is there's going to be multiple trials there's going to be multiple jurisdictions and no they don't necessarily have to have anything to do with the other and no one judge does not have to have the right to interfere in or uh pursue the findings of a grand jury that's not even in her just the jurisdiction under her purview, even if it is investigating a client that's in trial in her court. That's just the way it is. And Aline Cannon, uh, unfortunately, from, you know, she's, it's unfortunate that she's got to be in the seat that she is and learn the job on the run because she's just following up everything. But, you know, in the long run, maybe that's what Jack Smith really actually wants. Maybe he, Let's Arlene Cannon, you know, tie Trump up with, you know, all of these uh, legal arguments while he secretly goes about doing his business in the other court, in the other case, and pins Trump to the wall. Even though the, the documents case shouldn't be laughed at because there's no way, even if you are the ex-president or current president of the United States, should you be in possession, sole possession, sole control of documents so sensitive to the security of the United States of America. No, no country wants this in their history unless they can just definitely say, yeah, we got past it and we're so much better for it. And we can't say that yet because it looks like we may never get past it. And if we do get past it, we, we're not going to be better for it because it just because Trump may not be with us, but the, the, the madness that bears his name, he didn't create it. Trump never created anything. It just, like a lot of other things, bears his name. Uh, Trumpism, Trumpism is still going to be here, and that's a, that's a scary thought <laughs> on this weekend in September the third in 2023. Now, um, we can't get past Trump. We can't, you know. It's hard. It's hard for us to accept. It's hard for us to reject. Nobody is on the same wavelength, and that's probably what is wrong with this country right now. That's part of the division. But for all of you people that cry freedom and you, you know, you want your freedom and it's about, you know, Trump's protecting your individual rights. Think about this. How many individual rights do you have in a monarchy? How many individual rights do you have when someone calls himself king or queen? And the very same people that you are trumpeting as, as, as the real patriots, the real saviors of America, they're starting to call Donald John Trump, former 45th president of the United States, King Donald. And they mean that shit. Well, that's it. That's it for me. Weekend wrap up. You can take it for what you want to take it for. You know, but I hope everybody had a good weekend. I hope everybody had a peaceful weekend. And I hope everybody is ready for whatever is to come during this week. Oh, by the way, on the local level. I will be doing my first candidate interview. Uh, it involves Nottaway County politics. The candidate I'm interviewing, she's running for Nottaway County Board of Supervisors from the second district. I believe that's the district in crew. We'll find out when I interview her on Wednesday night. And that is none other than Mrs. Helen Robinson Simmons. She's running for Board of Supervisors. She's been there before. But she's running for re-election, District 2, Nottaway County Board of Supervisors. Going to do a taped interview Wednesday night. It'll be up Wednesday night on Facebook, on, on my channel, on YouTube. But catch it. And then we can talk about it when I go live on my regular Thursday night live. Uncle Ricky's house, 730 Eastern Time, Thursday night. But be there. 
hear what this woman has to say. See if you agree with it, see if you don't agree with it. See if, you know, she's worth your vote in the upcoming election. But as for me, glad to be of service, have a chance to offer the opportunity, and as always, peace out and God bless from Uncle Ricky at Uncle Ricky's house.